Hey friends, Phil Bechtel here. Before we get started with today's episode, I want to make sure you know about a giveaway from one of our sponsors. The Week Junior, a kid's magazine that my kids love, is giving away five subscriptions. That is so cool. To enter the giveaway, all you need to do is visit theweekjunior.com slash giveaway. Thanks to The Week Junior and good luck to everyone entering. I can't wait to hear who wins. Hello, friends. Phil Bechtel here from the Kid Stories Podcast. A while back, I gave the students at Robeson Elementary a story starter. It was the beginning of a story about a young girl who thinks she has found a magical door. The students at Robeson Elementary then submitted endings to the story. I received over 300 story endings. I was so impressed with the quality of writing and the amazing ideas that I got to read. So to all of the students at Robeson who submitted an ending, great job. I am blown away with all of your stellar ideas. I chose one of the entries, and I have adapted it to make a complete story. In this case, an adaptation is when I take the student's original work and I use it to write out an ending myself. So the end result is not exactly what the student wrote, and it's not just my idea. It is a combination of the two. And while I could have literally chosen hundreds of excellent samples to use, I had to pare it down to just one, and I think you'll enjoy it. This ending is from a student in Mrs. Hoskins' class, named Kylie. The story is titled Ava and the Magic Door, and I hope you like it. It was another typical school day for Ava at Robeson Elementary. She hung up her coat and got started on her morning work. Her classmates filed in, and she waved her quiet hellos. As the day went on, Ava found herself looking at the clock and looking forward to her favorite part of the day, recess. The weather was nice, so everyone knew they were going to have outdoor recess. The time finally came and Ava lined up with her classmates. They walked calmly down the hallway and out the door. Once her feet hit the grass, she took off with her friends, running around, figuring out what they were going to play. Before they really decided on a game, Ava noticed something. A door. Drawn on the side of the school with chalk. They never had chalk at recess, but maybe there was some over there. Ava figured that if someone drew a door on the side of the building, maybe there was a bucket of chalk over there. Or at least a few pieces that her and her friends could use. Ava broke from her group and jogged over to the brick wall. She looked closer at the drawing. It was just a tall rectangle. It was all drawn with bright white chalk, including a round handle about halfway up. Ava thought for a brief moment about trying to open the door. As silly as it seemed to try and open a door drawn on the wall, it was like an itch she needed to scratch. She lifted her hand up, but before she touched the round chalk doorknob, some of her friends ran up. Ava, what are you doing? They asked. Come and play. I was just looking for some chalk, said Ava. Somebody drew this door here, and I thought maybe there would be some chalk laying around. Ava and her friends scanned the ground nearby, but there was no chalk to be found. And recess didn't last forever, so Ava joined her friends in their usual recess games until they all had to go inside again. The day continued, and Ava didn't think much about the chalk door again. Until after school. She joined some other students in Nature Club. Every few sessions, they spent some time walking around the school grounds and collecting trash. So Ava and the other club members slipped on their rubber gloves and grabbed their trash bags. They spread out all around the school property and picked up any trash they saw. Ava was walking alone down the side of the school building, heading toward the back playground, the one her class uses for recess. She looked up and saw the principal, walking in the same direction. The principal turned the corner, and Ava followed right after her, looking for trash to pick up on her way. But when Ava turned the corner, the principal was gone, and a light was shining out from the edges of the chalk door. Ava stood stunned, and it appeared as though the chalk door had just slowly closed. As the door closed, the light shining out from the edges went out, and it again appeared to just be a chalk drawing of a door. Miss Pitcher? Ava called out, wondering where she went. It didn't make sense. She saw her turn the corner, and now 
she's just gone. Did the principal really just walk through some kind of magical chalk drawing? Impossible, whispered Ava as she walked closer to the door. She stood right next to the brick wall of the school, staring at the chalk-drawn door when she heard a voice behind her. Hello, Earth to Ava. Why are you staring at the wall? One of her friends asked. A small group of her after-school nature club had come around the corner looking for more trash to collect. Oh, yeah, I was just checking out this door drawn on the wall here, said Ava. Yeah, well, let's finish picking up trash and go in for a snack, her friend suggested. Ava thought about telling her friends what she saw, but she was certain no one would believe her. She wasn't even sure she believed it herself. Had she just imagined it all? Did she really think the principal had walked through some magical door? Ava and her friends went back inside and enjoyed a snack. But Ava could not stop thinking about that door. She decided that tomorrow she was going to get to the bottom of this. Tomorrow she would try and enter this strange door. The next day at recess, Ava kept her eyes on the door. She did not find an opportunity to try and open it. There were too many people around, so she waited until school was over and running club began. As the students jogged up and down the road in front of the school, Ava sneaked around to the back of the school where the chalk door was drawn. She did not feel entirely comfortable doing this. She wasn't used to sneaking, but she figured it would just be for a little bit. As the sounds of her friends in running club and other kids on the playground faded, she approached the door, standing right up against the brick wall. She looked around, making sure no one was watching, and reached out her hand. As she touched the doorknob, it became real, and she could feel it in her hand. She turned the knob and pulled the door open. She stepped into a small room, and in front of her were two more doors. One door read, Past, and the other door read, Future. Ava looked behind her to see that the door she came in through had closed. She turned to the future door and reached out to grab the knob. Before her hand touched the door, it burst open, and two women in dark blue jumpsuits barreled through. One of the women tackled Ava and held her down on the ground while reaching in her pocket for something. Before Ava could protest, the other woman shouted, Wait! It's me! It's a good me! Get off! She doesn't have a scar! The girl who tackled Ava stood up and apologized. Oh, sorry, sorry. I just, uh, you know, the person we're after looks just like you, so. As Ava stood to her feet, she noticed that the other woman looked just like her, only older. And sure enough, she stepped forward and revealed why she looked so much like Ava. Ava, it's me. I mean, I'm you. Just from the future. Future, Ava said. And this is my partner, Kylie. She's the future version of your friend, Kylie. What is going on? Asked Ava. Right, yeah, okay. I'll explain, but we don't have much time. Try and keep up, said future Ava. We are time cops. We're from the future, and we are after a version of you from the past. She's your age and looks just like you, except she has a scar on her face. We have to return evil Ava to her own time, or she's going to screw up all the other timelines. So, Mrs. Pitcher is a time cop? Ava asked, wondering why Mrs. Pitcher was going in the door. Oh, yeah, yeah, she's a, a part-time time cop about to go full-time time cop said future Kylie. That's why she was able to open the door. The time doors all have biometric scanners, and so all the time cops can open them. So since you are an Ava, you can open the door. It's kind of a loophole, and we haven't figured out how to fix it, but we can't go into all that now. We have got to get evil Ava and send her back to her own time. We tracked her here, and we think she's somewhere in the school. But what can I do? asked Ava. I don't have any cool future gear. I don't even have one of those jumpsuits. The best bet is to run a distraction play, said future Kylie. We find her and you pretend to be her. Or you, I don't know. Just be yourself and while she's distracted, we can try and zap her back to her original time. 
Ava nodded, but was still confused. This was all happening so fast. Future Kylie and future Ava hustled around the side of the building and Ava followed. Some kids were still playing on the playground and they seemed surprised to see her. Ava, how did you get over here? We, we just saw you inside the school. And who are these guys? Her friend asked, pointing to future Ava and future Kylie, who did seem out of place as grown-ups wearing dark blue jumpsuits. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I just came out the back door, I guess, said Ava, stumbling over her words. And these two are my aunts. Yeah, they're visiting from someplace else. Ava ran off, following future Ava and future Kylie as they continued around the building. They pulled on a door leading into the school, but it was locked. Future Ava placed her phone against the fob panel near the door, and it clicked open. How do you have a key to get in? asked Ava. It's a phone from the future. It can handle these old locks pretty easy, said future Ava. Now let's get through here and find evil you. The group ran through the halls, poking their heads into every room they passed. There she is, Ava shouted. Through the windows of the library, Ava saw a different version of herself sitting at a computer. It looked just like her, but with a, a faint scar on her cheek. She's getting on the internet, using future tech to hack into banks, no doubt, said future Kylie. Go in there and flush her out. We'll be waiting out of sight in the library so she doesn't see us. We want to surprise her and send her back to her own time with one of these time kicks. Future Kylie held up a small black hockey puck-shaped device that was glowing faintly red. Ava entered the library without any real idea of what she was going to do. She figured maybe her evil self would just run off after she was found out. Unfortunately, that's not how it went. Hello, Ava said cautiously, and evil Ava snapped her head to the side in surprise. Hello, me. I'll be out of your way in just a minute. Just transferring some funds. Ava could tell from the computer screen that evil Ava was up to no good hacking into something via the school's internet connection. Um, I, I think you should leave, Ava said, hearing the uncertainty in her own voice. Oh, I will, just as soon as I'm finished, evil Ava said. Ava was at a loss. It was clear that this evil version of herself was just going to go about her business. So, Ava improvised. She walked to where the computer cord was plugged into the wall and yanked it out. The screen blipped black, and evil Ava slammed her fists down onto Mrs. Archer's desk. What have you done? Evil Ava yelled. She jumped over the desk and lunged at Ava. She stumbled backward and clambered over some tables. Ava desperately hoped that the future version of herself would bust in the room and do whatever it was they were going to do. Ava ran all around the room, throwing books at evil Ava and escaping over and under tables until the room was an absolute mess. Finally, evil Ava had Ava trapped against the door to the hallway, and Ava could only scream for help. The two time cops burst in through the door, sending the two fighting Avas flying. Future Kylie pulled out the futuristic device that glowed red and could send people back into their own times. She squeezed the device and then threw it at evil Ava, who swatted it away with a book. The small, round, glowing device landed at future Ava's feet. Before she could react, the device flashed a bright red, and future Ava disappeared. No! yelled future Kylie as evil Ava leaped onto her in a terrible assault. Future Kylie was able to reach in her pocket, and she rolled another time kick over to Ava. Evil Ava and future Kylie were fighting each other there on the floor of the library, and Ava held the device in her hand. She squeezed it, and the red flashing grew brighter and faster and faster, and future Kylie kicked evil Ava off herself and into the middle of the room. Ava tossed the time kick right where she landed, and in a bright flash of red, evil Ava disappeared. Oh my gosh, what just happened? Is future me okay? asked Ava a bit panicked. She's fine. It just flashed her back to her own time, said future Kylie. And you flashed evil you back to her own timeline. Good job, kid. Ava sighed and realized that she was exhausted from all the action, the fighting, and just everything. Future Kylie stood up, 
moaning in pain from her fight. Are you okay? asked Ava. I'll be fine, just some bruises, she said. I'm heading back to my own time. Promise me you won't go in that time door again, okay? Uh, I promise, said Ava. Chances are good that evil you comes back for her revenge, said future Kylie. If that happens, we'll be back to do this all over again, but hopefully it won't come to that. Check you later, Ava. Future Kylie tapped on her phone, and another red flash filled the library, and then Ava was all alone. Well, that was nuts, Ava said to herself. Just then, Mrs. Archer entered the library and was shocked at the mess. Ava, are you serious right now? What were you thinking? Why would you make this incredible mess? She asked. Ava looked around the room at the tables flipped over and hundreds of books scattered on the floor. I, uh... Ava realized quickly that telling the truth was not an option. No one would believe her. It, it was a prank. Well, then it was the worst prank in the history of pranks, said Miss Archer. I assume you'll be cleaning this all up right away then? Um, yeah, yeah, sorry, said Ava. She spent the next hour or so cleaning up the library and wondering if she would ever help out the time cops again. The End Thanks for listening, friends, and thanks for all the amazing submissions from the students at Robeson Elementary. Adios.